You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Repeat Remake Sissel's Path. So y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up and let's go! Oh yeah, the channel got like 5,500 views in a single day the other day. Mostly thanks to that, uh, pretty, pretty spicy Lust Charge thumbnail I put up. But anyway, let's go ahead, alright? Alright, the bouncer standing guard glared at us suspiciously. I gulped. The guy was huge. He could probably snap us in half with his bare hands. What was Jenny thinking? Bouncer, uh, the bouncer's eyes suddenly lit up when he got a closer look at us. Well, look who it is. How's it going, Jenny? Hey, Terry. I'm doing well. Is Morse busy today? I was hoping to talk to him for a few minutes. Uh, the bouncer peered over his shoulder and shrugged. It's been a pretty quiet morning. I'm sure the boss would love to see you. He suddenly caught sight of me and frowned. Who is this little brat? I hid behind Jenny and <clears throat> waved meekly. Hi. Oh, he's a good friend of mine. No worries. We can trust him. The bouncer sighed and stepped aside, opening the door for us. But try not to piss off the boss, he's been a bit on edge lately. No promises. Ginny stepped inside before excitedly beckoning me to follow her. Come on, Adrian, stop being a worrywart and hurry up. I gulped and followed her closely into the dark robin's, ne into the dark robin's nest. This felt like a terrible idea. Surprisingly, Ginny didn't walk straight to the bar or even to the main lounge area. She grabbed my hand and quietly led me to a narrow corner with a small, unassuming door. After stumbling through the dark for a few minutes, we made our way into a dimly lit room. <clears throat> I stared in disbelief. Wait, are you telling me there's a bar lounge hidden behind another bar lounge? Who designed this place? The lounge was entirely empty as we strolled inside. Ginny shrugged with a laugh. This hidden lounge is for special guests. Morse doesn't like dealing with most customers, so he lurks back here most of the time. He also doesn't like dealing with kids who show up unannounced. I jumped as someone suddenly stood up from behind the bar. Oh, hello there. Damn, he's handsome. He was a tall, disgruntled fox wearing an odd-looking hat. His face was narrow and strict with a pair of eerily hawk-like eyes. Oh, Morris, you're still wearing that hat I gave you. The man shrugged and tinkered behind the bar nonchalantly. You get all huffy when I show up without it. Shouldn't you be at home? Your grandmother will throw a fit. Ginny rolled her eyes. She should get used to it by now. I can't stay cooped up all day. Anyway, my friend and I were hoping to ask you about a few things. Morse finally turned his hawk-like eyes to me. His gaze was sharp. It felt almost like cutting it felt almost like it was cutting through me as he peered my direction. Aren't you the kid that Philip took a bullet for a couple days ago? Adrian, was it? I gulped. Yeah, but how did you know? It's my job to know things. Which apparently means you folks will come interrogate me whenever you need to know something. Morse sighed tiredly and slid two glasses of soda in front of us. Crossing his arms, he leaned back behind the bar and observed us with cold, amber eyes. So, what do you want to know? Ginny was busy sipping at her soda. I gulped and fidgeted on the bar counter. So, uh, we were wondering if you could tell us anything about a friend of ours? His name's Herschel McDermott, the boss at the, of, the ca of that cafe downtown. Ginny looked up from her soda with a grin. Morris, you went to Girani about the same time as Herschel, didn't you? Is there anything you remember about the guy's family? Morris scratched his chin slowly. Herschel, Herschel. Oh, right. I think I remember him. Cecilia Bradley's little brother, I think. He was just a little kid when I first met him. I blinked in surprise. Cecilia Bradley? As in that lady who won the National Culinary Arts Contest years ago? Yeah, that's the one. Her friends just call her Celia. She taught me to play chess back when I was at Gerania. Morris nodded. Smiling softly at the memories. She's a good soul, that one. Brilliant, too. His smile disappeared. So you deserve better than what she got. What do you mean? Morse sighed tiredly before reaching for a cup of coffee behind the counter. Cecilia and Ursula McDermott's parents are both pieces of trash. Worse, they were involved in criminal dealings with the Lorelei family. Their home was no place for children. The only reason Celia stayed in that house for so long was to keep her little brother safe. She could only take so much, however... I could, only, I could hardly blame her. She's just a child herself. In a brief period of time where Celia ran away from home and lived out on the streets, she worked her ass off for a couple of years to gather enough money to take care of her brother. Shortly afterwards, Celia rescued Herschel from that accursed house. 
Good thing. The parents' meth lab blew up on the very night of his rescue, burning their home into ashes. Morris paused and took a sip of his coffee. Second, y'all. It's coffee time myself. Ooh. Alrighty then. After that, Celia used all her money to attend Gerani Academy, sneaking her brother along with her. Those two were inseparable. She was always looking out for her little Herschel. Both of them were real good at the whole culinary arts thing, too. They often talked about opening a cafe together when they got older. Where is Celia Bradley now? I fidgeted uncomfortably. I probably wasn't going to like the answer. Morse's eyes pierced into me. She's dead. Her parents owed a lot of debts. When they were around anymore, naturally those debts fell onto her. She was in no position to pay them off. Oh. Morse sighed and stood up straight, dusting himself off. That's enough depression questions for one day. Are you kids done? My usual customers are going to be arriving soon. You can't have a bunch of children around when they arrive. Right. We'll get out of your way, sir. Hold on. I've got one last question. Did Herschel ever, or Celia ever have any kids? Moore scratched his chin for a moment before shrugging. Herschel never had any luck with the ladies, so I doubt it. By the way, that accent he does isn't real. It was something he picked up because he thought it made him sound hot. Morse wrinkled his nose, as though he caught a whiff of, as though he caught a whiff of something foul. Didn't work out, but the accent stuck. As for Celia, Cecilia, I'm not sure. We stopped talking after I got dragged away from Gerania. A shame. She was always kind to me. Being unable to help her, and then learning of her death years later, it still haunts me. Ginny bit her lip in disappointment. Oh, sorry for bringing up these bad memories. Thanks for your help, though. We really appreciate it. Morse rolled his eyes and shooed us towards the door. The best thing you two can do for me right now is to get out of my hair. Alrighty, alrighty, we'll be going now. Uh, see you around, Morse. You kids stay out of trouble now. Jeannie and I exchanged looks as we made our way out the door. Well, if you wanted information, we sure got it. But I'm not sure if any of this will actually help Sissel in any way. One moment, please. I jumped as I felt a hand on my shoulder. Morse appeared behind me, looking rather bemused. Y yeah? I was just wondering. How was Owen doing? I blinked in confusion. Uh, Owen? He's been doing pretty well. Nothing out of the ordinary, as far as I know. Well, why do you ask? Morse only sighed and adjusted his hat slightly. I see. That will be all. Have a safe trip back to campus. I can only stare dumbfounded as Morse made his way back into the night lounge. Strange man. Ginny and I discussed our findings in hushed voices as we made our way back to Gerania's campus. The sun was already setting into the city's skyline. Our exhaustion was slowly starting to get the better of us. Ah, mm, mm, mm. I think I'm going to have to hit the hay soon. We haven't even found a real connection between Sissel and Herschel yet. I couldn't help but yawn back at her. Well, Rome wasn't built in a day. We can always dig deeper tomorrow. Ginny suddenly broke out into another coughing fit, hunching over her scooter. Her face was strained, with sweat forming on her brow as she tried to catch her breath. Cough, cough, cough. Ah, damn it! Looks like I can't do much more anyway. Better get back home before Grant actually has an aneurysm worrying about me. Where do you live? I can walk you back home if you want. Ginny scowled and waved her hand dismissively. No, no, I can walk on my own. Don't worry about that. All the little secrets in this game. Everyone's got secrets. She straightened up and stubbornly got back on her scooter. Another deep breath and a good kick. She was already halfway down the street. Let me know if let me know if anything about Sissel's situation comes up. I waved as Jenny disappeared down a street corner inside. It's getting late. I should probably start heading back soon. Hmm? Look around in surprise. Was that Echo? I haven't heard from him in so long that I almost forgot about the guy. Oh, what time? That's not too bad. Okay. Nah, that's not too bad. Alrighty. You would forget about me. Man, I feel a little offended. Echo's voice reverberated through my head in his usual ghostly manner, but it was startling... It was startling how tired he sounded. Well, in my defense, you kind of went MIA for almost a whole week. You sound a little under the weather. Did you catch a cold or something? Can Wishes even get sick? Echo's voice rasped in my head as he began to materialize in front of me. He's appearing a lot slower than usual. Oh! Yep. Ugh, sorry, I've been feeling rather weak lately. Holy, are you alright? Echo gave me a dismissive wave and rubbed his forehead wearily. I've been better, but I'll be fine. I just, ugh, I feel a little drained, that's all. I gulped at the sight of Echo's shattered body. 
Parts of him were breaking off into blackened shards and flaking into the air. Echo's calmness in this situation made everything all the more uncomfortable. Is there anything I can do for you? You're my wish, after all. Maybe I can help. Echo shook his head with a smile. Usually, a wish's strength comes from the wisher's willpower, but I think this is because of something else entirely. Have you noticed how the remnant has been growing stronger lately? In his appearance today, he was able to talk coherently and stop time for a moment. This thing is growing more and more dangerous. And you're growing weaker and weaker, too. Echo shook his head dismissively again. No need to worry about me. I can take care of myself. I, I just needed to warn you. The remnant seems to have taken an interest with Sissel lately. If it continues to grow stronger, who knows what it will do to him. You'll have to keep a close eye on your friend if you want to keep him safe. All right, I I'll keep that in mind. But what about you? Echo chuckled to himself quietly. I've always been the one watching over you, not the other way around. It's a bit weird to have you worrying about me. Leave all the ghostly matters to me. You just worry about yourself, Adrian. There was a sinking feeling in my stomach as Echo faded from view. I guess there wasn't much I could do for him in a situation like this, but it was still horrible to be so helpless. <sighs> I was jolted out of my thoughts as my phone suddenly began buzzing angrily in my pocket. It took a bit of panic digging before I could fish it out. H hello Adrian speaking. Oh, Adrian, uh, glad you finally picked up. Uh, how are you doing? The sound of Sissel made a reflexive smile spread across my face. I'm doing pretty all right, I guess. Listen, buddy, I need to ask for a favor. I uh, uh, kind of left my work uniform back in my dorm in Gerania. It's still in that drawer under my bed. Now I can't get it because, you know, I got suspended and banned from campus. I chuckled and began strolling in the direction of our dorm building. No worries, man. I'll go grab it for you. It'll give me an excuse to come visit you tonight. It was the faint sound of Sissel mumbling in embarrassment at the other end of the call. Damn it, now you've made things all mushy again. Well, I'm sure Boss wouldn't mind having you over again. Plus, I've got to show you my plans for the cafe. There's so many improvements and changes I want to make. I'm going to make Boss's cafe into the best cafe in the world. Just you watch. There was a flush of pride in his voice as he rambled excitedly about his plans to improve Herschel's business. He seemed to catch himself in his ramblings and cleared his throat in embarrassment. <clears throat> Uh, anyway, I can't do all that without a proper work uniform. Could you get it to me by the end of the day? I don't want to show up to work in a ripped tank top again. Aw, I'm sure that a lot of the customers would appreciate the bad boy look it gives you. It's pretty cute. It's pretty cute. It, it's not professional. Uh, anyways, a uh, uniform, grab it. I'll see you soon, thanks. With that, Cecil hung up the phone with a smack. Heh, <laughs> it was fun to rile him up like this. The sun was already setting into the horizon by the time I arrived at Herschel's Cafe. The little bell on the cafe's door jingled softly as I ducked inside from the summer heat. I took, a, I took a moment to enjoy the wave of cold air conditioning wafted across my face. Hey, Sissel, I grabbed your uniform for you. Yeah, yeah, uh, g give me a moment. I stopped mid-sentence and slowly took in the sight in front of me. There was Sissel, teetering across the cafe with three plates of delicate chocolate desserts balanced on each arm like a tightrope walker. Only this was more delicious. All my favorite things in one package. This was almost dreamy. Cecil was walking steadily like a practiced waiter, but his arms wobbled with the weight of so many plates. Do you mind giving me a hand, Adrian? Or are you just going to stand there and gawk? What? Oh, right. I wiped the drool from my mouth with a sheepish grin and grabbed two of the plates from Cecil's load. We placed them all behind the counter with a satisfying click as each plate hit the hard surface. Cecil promptly groaned and slumped behind a display case in exhaustion. You'd think carrying plates would be easy, but it really tears up your arms after a while. It'd probably be easier if you just carry less at a time, dummy. That'd take forever, though. I've got so many plates for this little cafe. I gotta get stuff done so quickly. I glanced around the cafe curiously. The place seems much more shiny since this morning, as though someone windexed and polished every surface in the dining area with the commitment to shine them into mirrors. The place looks pretty good already. What sort of plans are you thinking of? Cecil immediately perked up and began pointing around the counter with excitement. I've got plenty in store for this little cafe. Uh, boss is pretty happy with what I've done so far. Oh. Ooh. There are a ton of fancy new desserts on the menu now. I've made a ton of them today, and people can't get enough of them. I felt my mouth water again as I leaned into the glass display, as I leaned into the glass display case on the counter. Cakes and desserts of all shapes and colors glistened behind the glass. It looks so damn good. I'm sure business is going to get a lot better with so many options. The regulars seem to like it so far, but most people don't know about the new menu changes yet. I'm going to have to start handing out pamphlets and ads to let the neighborhood know that we've got new and improved menu items. Oh, Cuties. 
And most of them are chocolate, so I hope you like them too. I'm making them all personally. What? I didn't quite catch that. Nothing. Just try the chocolate desserts. They're good. This is like chocolate heaven. I'm making it my goal to try every dessert at least once. Sizzle's face flushed and beamed with pride. Heh. <laughs> good to hear that you're enjoying yourself. His eyes wandered through the empty and dim cafe. His ears twitched with a hint of anxiousness. I hope Boss is as happy about it as you are. I'm putting everything I've got into this plan. With some luck and hard work, business should be booming and Boss is going to get himself out of all that debt. He won't regret taking me under his wing. This will work out great. I couldn't help but smile as I looked up at Cecil. His tone was heavy with determination and ambition. My chest fluttered with warmth. I'm sure Herschel's going to be real proud of everything you've done. Oh, that reminds me. Here's your work uniform. Heh. <laughs> Thanks, Adrian. I knew I can count on you. I cleared my throat loud and ignored the heat spreading across my face. Anyway, I should probably get back to Gerani before Mrs. Corlice throws a fit again. Are you sure? It's pretty late at night right now. The streets can get a little sketchy. Boss probably won't mind if you stay over for the night. It sounded tempting, but... Nah, Mrs. Corlice... Nah, Mrs. Corlice is gonna pulverize me if I miss curfew two nights in a row. Hasn't curfew already passed? What? I glanced at the clock. Sure enough, it was 11.43 p.m. already. That late? I should probably run back before they realize I'm gone. Alrighty then, stay safe, Adrian. I scrambled to the cafe entrance and yanked it open with a laugh. I will. Oh. Will you? I immediately slammed the door shut. On second thought, I might take your offer to stay over tonight. Are you sure Herschel won't mind? Well, sure. He's not going to dump you on the streets at the dead of night. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks. Or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.